What's going on, everybody? It's me, it's me, it's the P R I M E. Coming at you guys with another episode of the Prime Nostalgia Podcast. And my guest at this time is Mike Larkin. How's it going? I'm doing well. Happy to be on the Prime Nostalgia Podcast. I enjoy your work. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get right on into it. I got to ask everybody this question. Uh, what was a typical Friday night for you growing up? <laughs> typical Friday night for me. Um, I think for me, just I w- growing up, like I was a big Nickelodeon fan, Disney Channel fan. So obviously with Nickelodeon, you had the TGI Fridays. I'd watch your Keenan and Kells, your All That, so your Kablams, your Secret World of Alex, Secret World of Alex Mack, uh, your I Real Monsters, anything cartoon and anything Nickelodeon related. Hell, even Hey Arnold was in there. Disney Channel, I'd watch some of the Disney Channel original movies like you had back in the day, like My Date with the President's Daughter, your Halloween Town. Uh, so many different you know varieties of that are shows like you know the famous Jet Jackson. Uh, Pretty much anything with Disney and Nickelodeon, MTV in there as well, because I was a big TRL fan, you know, coming home from school on a Friday, going into the weekend, watching TRL, watching pop-up video on VH1, watching 106 in Park on a... Oh, yeah. Yes, with Free and AJ, Rap City with Big Tigger. I mean, dude, I was I was all over the place with that because growing up in New York, uh, channels 52, 53, 54 were VH1, MTV, and BET, so I got it right there, and that was what I mostly watched was Nickelodeon, Disney, and a variety of that. Hey, that sound like me, and that sound like me, like all the way almost. Except for what? I think for me, my one hundred cents in park at that time was was a uh, Roxy. I think they moved to Roxy and Terrence J. I don't know yet, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I know Bow Wow was in there as well. I mean, for me, being the wrestling fan that I am, I remember watching John Cena when You Can't See Me came out, watching him perform on Rap oh, City and Rap Six of Heart. Man. <sighs> And now look I at him now. Well, yeah, now look at him now, man. He's he's the so far he's smarter than a fifth grader on Nickelodeon. So so so, I know you like to talk about boy band. So I'm gonna get this out of the way first. All right. I know we talked about your your favorite boy band. What do you classify as a boy band? Just for the people. Sure. Uh, well, for me, growing up in the 90s, the big three were Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, 98 Degrees. A lot of people classify number four being like LFO with their songs like Summer Girls and uh, Girl on TV. I think anything with boy band is really like bubblegum poppy. I mean, if you want to look at it, New Kids on the Block in a way were, were like the traditional first boy band. Jackson 5, you know, you could you could make a case for them in the 70s. But I think really, I think for me, I look at it like 80s with New Kids on the Block and I look at what we had in the 90s and that boom. So, yeah, that's what I classify as a boy band. Harmony, same dance moves. It's kind of like that Gary Owen sketch. You know, everybody does that same, you know, yeah, oh, and then you look at the girl out there. So it's kind of like if you watch that Gary Owen sketch on boy bands, it's pretty much what it is. Very in sync, very in harmony about it. Okay. So you would consider those to be your top three? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's what I grew up with, man. Like, I'll be honest with you, the days of Columbia Records and getting them off from that magazine and going, you know, being subscribed to J14, which still is in, you know, fruition today. So, I mean, that was my go-to. I mean, the Backstreet Boys, their first album, I had it on cassette and CD. The Millennium album, I even, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I had a Millennium t-shirt when I was a kid. And then, you know, going into the black and blue until they, you know, broke up for a little bit, then they came back. And I mean, watching Justin Timberlake's Boom, 98 Degrees, I mean, dude, there's so many of them. But yeah, the and there was Soul Decision kind of classifies in there. But there were so many 15 Seconds of Fame ones in, like, the late 90s but and the Europop scene. But still, like Five is another example, Westlife. But, I mean, yeah, I think that's what I classify. The top three from what I grew up in the 90s, BSP, NSYNC, 98 Degrees, in that order. Okay, okay. I went to BSB when they were in – they had a re- re- residency. I got to say it was a good show. I, I was going – I wanted to go to the DNA, but I probably won't be going to that. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, man. I think one of the other ones that people forget is I don't know if for those who are not familiar with it, a uh, Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal when he was the genie. Oh. So oh. one of the Backstreet Boys songs is actually featured in that movie. Boys will be boys during like the club scene where they're all in the club. Yeah, so Backstreet. That's a little tidbit for those that don't know. Backstreet Boys was featured in Kazam. I try to forget that movie as much as possible. Me so, too. Me yeah. too. I will put Backstreet Boys up there, but I would say for me, probably yeah. New Edition. Because they had a good bubblegum pop, but then they also transitioned to a, a genre called New Jack Swing, which I that's like my favorite genre. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at what Bobby Brown and Teddy Riley did in the day. You oh, know. yes. Teddy Riley is a genius. I, I say he's a genius. 
I agree. I mean, look at Rex in Effect. Look at Black Street. I mean, the dude is it was some of the great music. I mean, look at Guy. You know, just yeah. chill, let's settle down. Like I said, Teddy Riley, Bobby Brown, I mean, genius, and then to them together was genius. I mean, I I like them. Now, I like the Temptations, but I don't think they fall as a boy band group because they were all like adults. So I don't yeah. know how that how that fares. I would put them in more like the R&B, the Motown thing, man. I think that's more, okay. more R&B for them, yeah. I mean, I grew okay. up with – my mom was such a big Temptations fan, so I grew up on that music, man. I have We still have the miniseries on DVD, you know, with Leon in there. I mean, my God, what a miniseries that was. Man, that that, that might be my favorite miniseries, honestly. Without David well, Russell, y'all ain't yeah. nothing, man. Yeah, I think that's my that's my second favorite movie of all time. My first favorite movie is not even – it's not even a good movie, but it's Good Burger. Uh oh. I okay. Funny story about that. I got that as a Christmas gift from my mom when I was five years old. I love that movie, man. Marcus Houston's in there very early. Carmen yes, Lester's in that yeah, movie. Yeah. Shar Jackson. That had they had an RS All Star cast for that. Abe Vagoda, God rest his soul. Funny from top to bottom, man. Mondo Burger. You know, you better watch your butt, man. Okay. And then he turns around, he's watching his butt. I didn't even know that was Carmen Electra until maybe like two years ago. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yes, because <laughs> I, I, I like I wasn't paying attention to the the person. I'm just like, oh, she's just a normal, a regular person. And then I looked. I was like, wait a minute, she was in something else. I don't, I believe she probably was in like she probably came out with somebody in the WWF. And I was watching that. I'm like, wait a minute, that's that's Carmen Electra. And then I looked her up, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, she was in Good Burger. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked, yeah, because that was around the time when WWF, you know, if you look at it, like, when they had brought in, like, Jenna Jameson and Pamela Anderson, it was to escort yeah. Shawn Michaels and Diesel, so it was probably around that time. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's 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 just, I think that's my most nostalgic movie, because it, it got so much 90s stuff, and it's, like, one of the pivotal movies of the 90s. Well, yeah. of the, the Nickelodeon 90s, I would say. I agree. I mean, dude, I'm so happy. Um, Like, I know I heard your show with Christy. I mean, the all that reboot's coming back. Like, I was such a fan of what they did with all that and Good Burger. Like, I, I'm really curious to see, because it's coming out in, like, a couple of days, how the reboot goes. I've seen some previews of Lori Beth Denberg as the librarian again that Nickelodeon put on their YouTube. So it's it's going to be very interesting to see. I think it'll be for new audiences, yeah. but I, I still think older audiences can uh, – enjoy they can respectfully enjoy it of course like i don't think they're gonna like every single thing but they will like how can i put this like they would be like oh i I understand how that would be a good sketch or i can see it turn it into a good sketch in the future I mean, to equate it to, like, what the Disney did with Girl Meets World, like, there was some nostalgia Boy Meets World moments in that show, but it's like, okay, I'm cool with this, but yeah, you're going in this direction, and it's kind of like, yeah, I, I kind of see your standpoint on that, because it's that, if you actually look at what Girl Meets World did, it's exactly what I think that they're going to try to do with all that, you know, bring the nostalgia into it, but no, we're going to... No, let's not. No, let's no, not. No. <laughs> Girl Dude, Meets I, World, I felt, was like... I don't want to say terrible to hurt anybody's feelings, but I would say terrible as far as an adaptation to okay. Boy Meets World. Fair enough. I'll be honest with you. I only watched the first season, and after that, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of good. Because, you know, we got Sean in there. We got Angela. We got a lot of the cameos and, you know, Matt yeah. and Eric. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But it's just like, yeah, after that, I kind of like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I kind of got my fill. But, yeah, nothing will ever beat what we have with Boy Meets World for those seven seasons. That's where I messed up at, see. I watched every week because I was like, oh, yeah, this week is going to be a good episode. It's going to be all right. I got disappointed every time almost. And then, like, on the, on the episode, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to watch this no more. Then they bring, like, Sean or Mr. Feeney back. And then I was like, okay, I'll watch it again. And then I'll wait four more episodes and be disappointed. It's like you get four or five episodes of disappointments. Then they get one good episode or one solid episode. Then you get disappointed again. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The only shows I did watch, like the Feeney episodes, just because I think William Daniels is such an icon with that show and the Feeney call, like just to see that, you know, incorporate into the newer season, I think was great. And just, you know, that moment where Corey's calling him like Mr. Feeney and he goes, yes, Mr. Matthews, I'm still here. But that gets you. It gets you because, like I said, you know, it's time, man. Just time flies. Yeah, man. It's not, that may be my favorite show of all time. Boy Meets World, my favorite show. Second, I don't know what second. I mean, I watch a lot of shows, but I think Boy Meets World may be my absolute top favorite show of all time. I think for me, because I was also a fan of around the time, I, I know Keenan and Kel was a big one for me. I loved, <laughs> loved Keenan yeah. and Kel from like yes. 
I was yeah. kind of, I'll be honest with you, as like a four or five year old, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, Keenan and Kel, they're breaking off. I'm like, I'm, I'm curious to see how this goes because, you know, we've seen them and all that. And then they just, they knocked it out of the park each and every episode. Like, I like them bringing in, you know, Ke- you know, Alexis Fields and they brought in a lot of people. And the Ken well, on some. Well, yes. Well, you know what? I'm not going to even talk about her, but that's nope. all I got to say is cool. Ooh. No, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, it's a good thing. All right. Well, it's a good thing for me, too, because I, <laughs> I'm right there with you. She was eh, gorgeous. Mm. Well, yeah, dude. That was also around the time when she was doing, like, Sister, Sister, and I think yeah, she... Oisha. Oisha, yeah. Yeah. Whew. Anyways, let's get on... Who, who are you talking about now? Ah, uh, well, we were talking about... Okay, well, we were talking about Alexis Fields, but if I wanted to bring somebody else, I think, with, um, with Keenan and Cal, I mean... Dude, I gotta talk about Lady of Rage was actually. Did you ever see the episode where that like he has three dates and one of the dates is a lady? Oh of Rage. yes, yes. Okay, I, that's the one they had to go to the movie theaters and he kept coming out. Yep. Alphonse. Yeah. Okay. Alphonse. Yeah. Alphonse. Alphonse. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they have so many good episodes. It's like, oh, man. I know. I think one my favorite or one of my favorite episodes is. Now I don't know how much how good of a memory he had with episodes wise, but um, uh, one of my favorite episodes is when Keenan thinks he's getting in trouble because the principal calls and she wants to see his parents. Oh so, yes, yeah. He hires two people to play his parents, and it's just a fun dynamic to me. So, oh, yeah, the one the ones trying to act like she's like African and he's trying to be. Yes, all- yeah. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> she's terrible at acting. Yeah. Yes. And I think she kept calling him like. This is my Keto. son, Kate Keto. Yes, yeah. I'm like it's Keenan. I think either that one or um, the one they had with Bill Bellamy the first time. Oh, the yearbook one where they were taking all yeah, those. Yeah, pictures. yeah. They took all the pictures and all of it was oh, Bill Bellamy. And then he goes, Kel, what do you what what is wrong with all these pictures? Nothing, man. We took all the pictures. I don't, I don't know. Bill Bellamy, Bill Bellamy, <laughs> Bill Bellamy, and Bill more Bill Bellamy. Oh, uh, how you know what? That, oh man, that is like. A funny episode. That one, and then, um, they had a lot of funny episodes, but, like, those two may be, like, my top funniest. Because, I, I, will, I will say, even though I like the show, they do have some over-the-top moments that I didn't like as much as the regular moments. I me, mean, just because I enjoyed, like, the singing aspect of Kel getting to sing, I did enjoy, like, where they're, um, oh, yeah. they're acting, and they... <laughs> bring the guy in and they're appearing in the sk- in the movie there that's being filmed at Rigby's and Kel's talking about I'm drinking or a drain I'm drinking or a drain I'm drinking <laughs> or a drain I like that episode as well there's ice in my cup and I'm ready for love did you did you watch the movie oh the two heads are better than none yes yes oh man that movie is <laughs> I could not take somebody singing all those uh, bottles of soda on the wall and then don't finish Right. It's like you're just you, gonna stop right in the middle of that, not even finish. Yeah. You're just gonna stop. Yeah, you're just gonna stop. Not even gonna. That that's that would get on my nerves too. I mean, oh man, you know it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff that I like talking about. Kenan and Kel is one of them. Okay, and then it's like uh, boy bands in general. I like talking about, and another thing I like talking about is wrestling. We would get to it, but okay. just off the top, how did you become a wrestling fan? Okay, see, this is kind of funny because my dad, I remember coming down in 2001. This was like the end of, you know, the Monday Night Wars and WWE had won. This was during the United storyline and Stone Cold Steve Austin was in the back. Uh, I was nine, so my dad didn't want me to watch it. So he just told me to, you know, he kind of kicked me out of the room like, ah, but then what happened was. Uh, my mom had a family friend. His name is Carl, and he was very big into wrestling. So the very first, um, like, I'll be honest with you, I knew of wrestling during the Attitude Era days, but I didn't really start watching until we got to the quote-unquote Ruthless Aggression Era days where John oh, Cena okay. was coming up, Randy Orton, Batista. Yes. So the first Deacon event I Batista. Wrote, Deacon, <laughs> yes, I'll testify yes. with Reverend D. Right. Yes. yes. So the first ever show I went to, man, was um, East Rutherford, New Jersey. This was the night where Eric Bischoff became the general manager of Monday Night Raw, bra- bragging about beating Raw 83 weeks in a row. And then this this is when Triple H and Shawn Michaels, Triple H turned on Shawn Michaels, and then we got into oh, Triple H and oh, Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam, and that amazing card, Brock Lesnar and The Rock. So that's really how I got into it, just from a family friend going to the shows and just enjoying it ever since. Okay, all right. See, I came in kind of later, but I still went back to watch everything. 
Exactly. That's exactly how I did it. What year did you come into it? Ooh, I want to say 07. See, I was I was watching everything else but wrestling. And then when I got into wrestling, then that's when I started actually like enjoying it. Because I got into like a bunch of other shows, a bunch of other stuff. I was into basketball and football and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then my friend just kept telling me to watch. I was like, yeah, watch it. Watch. I was like, I don't want to watch wrestling. It's wrestling. So, you know. But then the, back then I only knew like probably Big Show and Undertaker as like names. That, those are the only things I knew. And then I watched it and I turned it on. The first thing I seen was Undertaker versus Big Daddy V. Oh, God rest his soul, former Vister, yeah. Yeah. I think this was the first time he used the Hell's Gate because he had put it on his mouth was bleeding. Yes, I remember that. All right. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I know he was in a few with Mark Henry, too. Yes, this is when he came back after Mark Henry beat him and Edge cashed in the money in the bank. All right. Okay. You yeah. see, that's not bad, though. That was that was, that was was a good time to start. But uh, I was only watching SmackDown because I thought it only came on SmackDown. So I was watching it in, like, WrestleMania. I bought WrestleMania. Honestly, I don't think nobody should do this, but I, I bought WrestleMania like without a- tell asking anybody, so I just bought it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I did that. Yeah, so I just I just bought it. I ain't tell nobody I bought. It. I just bought it. And like when the bill came, it was like, "Do you know that you bought a paper?" I was like, "Oh no, I have no idea what you're talking about." So that's how I escaped that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, WrestleMania 24. No, not WrestleMania. It, it couldn't be WrestleMania 24 because I went there. That was the Orlando one with Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, the retirement match. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was that one was a great one, man. I'm sorry, I love so you. Must have been, I don't know what what other one it was, but maybe it, no, maybe actually I think I did buy it back. Actually, now I think about it, I bought it back. Okay. Because it was days after when I when I got it was days after. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna watch that again. So it was on like on demand, I believe. <laughs> well, yeah, when and they I, did the 24 seven on demand back in the day, and now everything yeah. is the WWE Network. So I, I bought it on demand, and uh, yeah, so that's what that's what it was. It was, you know, it was a fun experience. And then I started, and then like the the raw after WrestleMania was my first ever raw watching. Nice. So you so, got to see leave the memories alone. Ric Flair crying and Shawn Michaels, everybody hugging Ric Flair as he was off into the sunset. Yeah, yeah. Then they introduced me to uh, a lot of new people that I didn't I didn't know. Awesome so, man. But uh. Yeah, man, wrestling is just. Do you only watch WWE, or you you try to you branched off? No, I branched I, off first. I branched. Man, I, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I branched out. Like, I got into um, TNA, which is now Impact yeah. Wrestling, Total Nonstop Action. In 2004, the very first uh, TNA show I watched was when Jeff Hardy uh, made his debut in TNA against AJ Styles on their second Ooh. anniversary show. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so this was, dude, this was their Wednesday pay-per-views, and it was only, like, 10 bucks on pay-per-views before they actually started doing pay-per-view pay-per-views. Like, this was their Wednesday night shows that were 10 bucks on a Wednesday night. And watching that, I just, I really enjoyed what I saw. I mean, there's a lot of great talents. Like, we mentioned AJ Styles, who's now doing his thing in WWE. Mm-hmm. I, got into, I got into Ring of Honor in 2005. The first ever show I actually went to was the night where Brian Danielson, who we now know as Daniel Bryan, defeated James Gibson, better known as Jamie Noble, for the Ring of Honor World Championship. You got to see guys like Loki, uh, Jay oh, Lethal, oh, Homicide, oh, Loki, Cabana, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it was a great time to watch it, man. This is mid uh, preteen, about to be 13 years old, just watching great wrestling. I used to go to the uh, Sports Plus in Lake Grove, New York, on Long Island, where they used to hold a lot of those shows. I think for me, it got to a point where I started watching TNA over WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> don't judge me or nothing, but this is around oh, the time the no. event mafia was a thing. Oh, so, yes. Kurt Angle, Scott Steiner, Sting, <laughs> Kevin Ash, Booker T, yes. They, they were so entertained. I was like, yeah, I probably watched this over Raw or SmackDown. So I, I was watching that mostly and catching Raw on the, like, whenever they showed the little replays or whatever. But, yeah, they, I, I thought they were good. They were real good until a certain person came into the company and, like, basically told them to pull their pants down and rape them. Basically is what they did. Yes. Uh, well, well, I mean, to use that term, but that's what they I, did. I hear you. I mean, dude, when I'll be honest, we when Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff came in and they did that in 2010, they tried to compete with the WWE in the Monday Night Wars 2.0 that lasted for like three weeks, and then they were back on Thursdays. 
And I mean, different ownerships now. I mean, they're on Twitch on Friday nights at 10 p.m. and they're on a, their Pursuit yeah. Network that nobody even knows, even gets the Pursuit Network. It's an outdoor channel, and it's like, think, how does wrestling fit on that? I, I think they more on Twitch. That they they do more stuff on Twitch because they do. You know, you don't need the cable to watch Twitch, so I think that's exactly. why they, they more rely on Twitch. Oh yeah, it's more internet oriented and it's accessible for everybody to check out. I mean, but when they put their videos on YouTube, I see they get they get good views, or at least on on certain videos they get a lot of views, like a million views and stuff. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and I think that's I great for them. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Um, but but yeah, like the only thing with TNA is like they they uh even though I like the main event mafia, mm-hmm. I don't think all the all the, I don't think every single person in the main event mafia should have got pushed over like AJ and and uh you know some people like that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. like you know, they pushed the older talent over the younger talent. That's oh, yeah. just one thing I wish that when, they didn't do. Dude, when you have Booker T and Scott Steiner beating Bobby Roode and James Storm beer money for the tag titles, and you're making, <laughs> and I mean, you're doing that, and you're putting yeah. Kevin Nash as the Legends Champion, beating all these young guys. It's like, come on, bro. Mick Foley had the title in 2009. He did beating Sting in the cage. Yes, oh, when he freaking goes in and he wins oh the title. Oh my gosh. Going off a long around Long Island the airport, the long the, uh, MacArthur Airport with the title, having fun with it. My God, yeah, they put it on Mick right as he came in. Oh man, they did they did do some some bad stuff though. I will say I like them and now I like TNA, but they did do some bad stuff. Uh, oh, that well, that year was the year of Jenna Maraska and Charmel Booker T's wife in that god awful match. The, remember the Survivor win? <laughs> the reality star, yes. Well, I think I don't think nothing could be as worse as the victory road match. Oh, with like, Sting and Jeff Hardy, that was two minutes. No, or? not even that one. Not even that one. There's one with two women. I forgot what the women names are. Yeah, Jenna Maraska and Charmel, Booker T's wife. That was the one. I thought it was. I could have sworn was it wasn't Charmel, but it, maybe maybe it is. I got to go back and watch it. But yes, that match was was uh. Well, Maybe, you, yep, yeah, now I think about it, yep, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And then the year later, I mean, they're capitalizing on the height of the Jersey Shore, and they're bringing in Wow, and they're bringing in Angelina, who wrestled a match in Impact. So, I mean, you know, they tried to capitalize on that. And yeah, brought, I mean, whew. you, you these, these bring bad memories for me. It is, man, and Ronnie was in there. They put in <laughs> Ronnie from the Jersey Shore. Well, look, WWE got the Mecca there in a way for Jersey Shore. Snooki wrestled at WrestleMania, so she's eligible for the Celebrity Wing of the Hall of Fame, if you think well, about it. Yeah. Anybody that makes an appearance, if you make an appearance for like two seconds, you're going to be on there. Look at, dude, Drew Carey was in the bat, was in the Royal Rumble. He's in the Hall of Fame. I'm surprised that Fred Durst ain't in there, or, or uh, Kevin Federline, or somebody like that. Oh, but Kid Rock is in there. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I mean, uh, you know, when I watch, see, I'm, I'm gonna continue to talk about TNA because, okay. uh, you know, they don't get a lot of attention like that these days. So I got to give them something. Exactly. I mean, as someone who has watched them for, since their original time on when they were on Spike TV on like, oh no, not Spike TV. I'm sorry, Fox Sports Net at like three or four p.m. in the afternoon on a Friday. Then they go on to Spike TV. Then they go on to Destination America. Then they're on Pop TV, which is the former TV guy network. Now they're on. Right. This network. Yeah. I stopped watching it. They, I stopped watching it weekly when they went to uh, Pop. No, when they went to Destination America. Okay. And then when they went to Pop. Because I was still watching. That's when that's when Matt Hardy was doing his broken thing. So I was still watching. Oh yeah, but then when, when he was Big Money Matt, and then he started becoming broken. Yeah. Yeah, with him and uh, was it Tyrus? Him and yes. Tyrus or the yeah, former Tyrus, Tyrus yeah. EC3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, did you see that video with EC3? Or you? It's like when him when he first in NXT and he's got all this energy, and like now he just he just don't even care anymore. No you see, dude, you're making me all upset because I did see that video, and I'm like, you had such promise, and you're all happy. Yeah, I'm in NXT, or I'm coming to Rocket. Now he's on the main roster on main event, and he's like, yeah, I'm here. Here we go. C, three, whatever. Yeah, okay. Let's get this over with. Let's just go. All right, I know I'm probably losing. Just let's go. Uh, probably. He know for sure he losing. He know. He knows. I'm just saying, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't know how they, how they ruin that, though. Like I don't. What the thing is, they do, they brought him up so soon. Like, he was killing it in NXT, you know, against matches like Velveteen Dream and Adam Cole. Then they brought him up too soon. He beats Dean Ambrose. He loses to Dean Ambrose. And then now he's doing this. He's in purgatory. He's stuck in limbo. Maybe they told Vince what EC3 stands for. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean he's Dixie Carter's nephew, damn it? Oh, I mean, I don't know. Because, 
like back like I want to go back to the 2010 ish when when uh Bischoff and Hogan Hogan took over. Um, they that that episode that they pushed so heavily the the January fourth, 2010, and they they thought it was doing such a good job, but like they had people like Knobs and well not Knobs and the Nasty Boys and and X Pac and Scott Hall. Uh, they were the tag team champions. Explain to me how did why did they need tag team championships? So that I remember what you're talking about. So yeah, watching the Nasty Boys and Brian Knobs looking like he's about to have a heart attack doing that promo. Yeah, can't even day. get to the ring. <laughs> so they did the thing where I believe um Kevin Nash won the Feast of Fire briefcase so he can challenge for the tag titles with a partner anytime. So yeah. I think Matt, Matt Morgan was down and then Kevin Nash just came in and laid on top of Matt Morgan for the one. This, two, this was at the point where I think Matt Morgan had like Three partners, and he attacked all of his partners so he could have the titles for himself. Exactly. Like, I get, I'm I the think, blueprint. Like, Samoa Joe was his partner, and Samoa Joe came back and, like, just Beat attacked him. Yeah, Hernandez. Yeah, I think it was Samoa Joe or, um, Hernandez. or Hernandez. Oh, yeah, was, Hernandez. Okay. Yeah, so he turned on Hernandez. Then he's like, I can win the titles by myself, and then I can win it with anybody. They, he put Amazing Red in there. He put a lot of people in there. Then I guess just Hernandez killed him. Then Kevin Nash came out and laid down, and then the Outsiders – you know, this is where the big boys play. They're winning the tag titles in 2010, and it's like, what the hell? The outsiders uh, limp their way to the ring. Yep. <laughs> yep. Limped all the way to the ring. Got in the ring. Uh, barely got down for the count. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't great Kali pin them and just put their foot over them. But, <laughs> you know, that's what they did, and they won the titles. They did. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we're kind of too old, so we're going we gonna to put a young member in there. So they, they got Eric Young. Uh, and Eric Young, who's hardly doing anything now on that roster, they had a thing with Sanity, and now he's just going for that 24-7 title, their PG version of the hardcore title. Uh, why they couldn't just have the hardcore title? <sighs> I like, think I think they just wanted to have fun with it and, I guess, less plum, what, less plunder and make it like a comedy thing, because R-Truth is being hilarious with it. You know, he's getting pinned yeah, on the— He's good uh, with it, but, I mean, that's, that's the only person that really matters, honestly, when they do it like it, that. It is, but, yeah, I just— I don't know. I'll be honest with you. The only thing I really like right now with WWE, the Bray Wyatt thing has been intriguing me, that Firefly Funhouse. What do you think about that? I think it's getting intriguing and it's creepy. It's like you got to do something. You got to capitalize on it eventually. Of course. Like I I think this is going to pan out to either Extreme Rules, their next pay-per-view in July, or hell, even SummerSlam. I know they got Stomping Grounds, which was originally Backlash, but now we have Stomping Grounds. Like We had Great Balls of Fire last year as a pay-per-view. Honestly, I would take that name over Stomping Ground. For real? Yes. Okay. At least it was a good show. It was. <laughs> Stomp the grounds don't even sound like it's going to be a good show. I think uh, you like, look at the car, you're like, mm, I'll pass. Yeah, and I think the tagline for it is a kicking ass and taking names, Stomping Grounds. Are they Roddy Piper now? I know, right? <laughs> Friggin' they live on you. <laughs> oh, man. So, look, I'm a, I am going to, well, I'm going to say stop talking about myself. Well, I'll talk about my stuff. We're going to talk about you. All right. Okay. Cool. I feel like I've been talking long enough, so we're gonna talk about you. Please. Let's talk about your show for okay. for a little bit. Now, I know you had a you had a couple people. I listened to a lot of episodes, so I just want to say you do a good job. Uh, well, a great job. You do a great job. Thank you. So, as far as your guest goes, like when you picking your guest, uh-huh. are you just like? I need a guess for this week, or are you like you looking for people, searching that for people? I think for me, as I look for people, I look at the talents that they have because with podcasting, what we do, and what the beautiful thing about podcasting is, we have the platform to give them to you know people to tell their stories. Like for instance, like I like you had Christy Knowings on. I wanted Christy Knowings. I grew up watching Christy Knowings. I watched Christy Knowings ever since I was five years old on all that when she first came on. Did you uh, tell I, that? that that make her sound old, probably. I'll be honest with you. I I did just because I said you you were my childhood, and I thank you. I thanked her for my childhood, man. I was my childhood, man. I loved it. The whatever the sketches that she did, I thought it was awesome. I appreciate it, and I have nothing but respect for that woman. And I look at like I had Raquel on my show, Raquel, and a dream I love. You will find my heart. I grew up on that song, and we talked about that. Samantha Cole, you know, who was on Shaggy's song, you know, Love Me, Love Me, Sex Machine, you know, after Janet Jackson did it. There were so many artists I wanted to interview, and independent artists, give them, you know. 
a voice to tell their stories because there's a lot of great people out there making music of different genres and music's an art form and wrestling i mean i've interviewed people that have been in ring of honor uh, tna wwe who were just on it married independent stars like for instance ring of honor i've had on kelly klein i've had on uh the w- i've had on wwe amber nova who was just on the nxt not too long ago I'm- So there's a lot of people that, you know, you go out to it. And I think I always tell people this. If you want to interview somebody, great. You know, just be professional and be very humble in how you go about it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's very key in what we do. Because if you're just coming like, yeah, I mean, you just have to be very professional about what you do. And don't, if they say no to you, fine. Then just keep doing what you're doing. Because, you know, people sometimes are not into podcasting. It's not really for them. Just as long as you don't regret. Exactly. If If you don't regret. Just don't regret not asking, pretty much is what I'm saying. But just uh, – exactly. Go ahead, man. I'll be honest. I've looked it. I'll be honest with you. I've gone – You there's a variety with my with my shows when I do like my pop culture shows, I, when I do my interviews. Like I've interviewed people that have even been in the adult entertainment industry. I mean comics, you know, music, wrestling. There's so many people out there that have a voice to tell their story. Just always be professional about it. And I mean I look at what they do. I always write notes. It's really kind of like 50-50 with me. Like I write notes because I want to like talk about a certain topic, but I always like free flow with it. Like with what I'm doing now with LFC, Lingerie Fighting Championship. The reason I started calling it beauty, strength, and dominance is because I look at the three key elements of who we are as fighters and overall women because women are a work of art, and they all exude and accentuate the three key elements of beauty, strength, and dominance. So that's how that name came into fruition. I always look at it like, you know, just want to do positive and do right by people, just like I said, just to reiterate, you know, giving them the platform to tell their story. And also for me, it's very rewarding. Like, I'll be honest with you. I've had on uh, Noah Bastian, Alex Solowitz, who are Mickey Park and Chad Linus from Together, the mock boy band Ron, that was on MTV. Because I grew up on that, man. I was eight years old, you know, singing. I know my calculus. It says you plus me equals us. So that means something to me because I grew up on this stuff. Okay, okay. See, uh, for my show, I try to get, like, people, I try to get, I, as, like, a lot of people as I can. But for the most part, I like uh, to get people that do not do what I do, but like they're more into like nostalgia TV. Okay. Like, you know, like say if I have somebody on from a show that somebody remembered, they was like, oh yeah, I remember them from this show and they did this and this. So yeah, I, I, try, I try to get like as many, I'm trying to get as many people as I can. Even if I had to record three episodes in one day with three different people, which I've done before, I, I, I do it. So. Well, I got to give you respect on that because there's a lot of passion with that. And I think both of us are very passionate in what we do, like with pop culture. If I have a guest on, whether it be from wrestling or like Christy Knowings or whoever, man, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot to cover. What you do with your show, you incorporate a lot of elements while also being very free flowing with. And that's what I respect with what you do and the mindset that you have. And I, I can tell you're just going to do fine at what you're doing. And like I always tell people, just stay on their grind. You know what I'm saying? Just stay on your path and everything will come into fruition. I think, uh, for me, like, because mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I'm not, like, though, I'm not, like, a, I will say proper, I guess you can say proper person. Yeah. So I'm not as proper. I'm just, like, laid back and chill, and, I, like, my personality comes out. So I guess they, they, they enjoy that over, like, I guess a serious, uh, straightforward interview. By me, I just like to have a good time in the interview. So, like, because, uh, like, that can help. That can, I don't know if you know who Alicia or two is. I do, Ambi, a music blog. Yeah, I've had her on my yes. show. Yes. So, I, I I did something with her a while back, and she said, "It's your job to make them look good, to make them feel comfortable, to make them be happy, even if they're having a bad day." So I try to I try to take that, and you know, I I try to uh, use that, try to make them happy or make them you know laugh or something to ease the tension. Of course, um, that's, that's a you know, basically course. sometimes you are interviewing a, a complete stranger. Like sometimes it just happens like that. So, you know, you got to lighten up the mood a little bit. Of course, I aim to do that as well. I mean, you have to do that. Have some fun with it. Make them laugh. I mean, so it's all about accommodation and comfortability. And I think that's how you have to go at it with each and every show that you do. So I will say this with me because I, I did actually you brought something up that I wanted to talk about, like New Jack Swing, because I love the Teddy Riley stuff and the Bob Brown. I appreciate the old school R&B from that time, even today with like Girl, I Got My Eyes on You and Guy, like you mentioned, like that New Jack Swing era. So with me, I have to say this to you as someone in the 90s, you know, listening to songs like Candy Rain, you know, by Soul For Real. And then you see what mm-hmm. Jock East then you see what Jacques was doing, talking about how he's the king of R&B and going right up into Keith Sweat's face, which is hilarious. So I'm just like, 
Yeah, I think it's just me. I'm just I'm an old soul, and I appreciate that. So I actually wanted to thank you for that because I appreciate music like that, music from the '90s and R&B. Because I mean, '90s R&B was awesome. Like I mentioned, Aaliyah. Uh, there's you know, Total. You know, I mean, 112. We could be here all day. It just I always appreciated the '90s R&B. I will say I am thankful. This is like my third interview in a row where I get to talk about my favorite genre of music, and I'm going to do just that. Let's do so, it. So, uh. I know I, I do have an, another episode because Christy told me to save her a music episode, so I'll save her music episode. So awesome. I can get I can get everything away. But uh, what are some of your favorite New Jack Swing songs? Uh, today, girl, I got my eyes on you. Bobby Brown, my prerogative. Don't be cruel. Pretty much anything on that album. Mm-hmm. Roni, I mean, I want to rock with your baby. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I will say this. Uh, I was really pissed off when Britney Spears did that god awful My Prerogative cover because I'm like, it's Bobby uh, Brown. It's Bobby okay, Brown. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I can't fault her only because she did Baby One More Time. And like that song is yes. like, uh, Damn. that song is like eh, good. Uh, now, I, I'll be honest with you. I, Britney, I guess, you know, she is up there, but a lot of her songs probably just don't, don't, get in tune with me okay but i do like her songs though don't get me wrong but a lot of them just not for me just be honest i mean i understand like i'll be honest with you some britney songs i'm kind of like mad about like obviously that first album you know your baby one more time from the bottom of my broken heart sometimes i run you drive me crazy then we get to like later songs where she's talking about you know boys and don't let me be the last to know they're good but it's just like you know I kind of like when early britney came out then we got to the oops i did it again album i think i was more like Mm -hmm. 99 2000 britney I know uh <laughs> now the one the one thing that made me like uh uh baby one more time. I don't know if you ever seen this movie Max Keeble's big move. I did with Alex D. Lindsay and he's in love with the girl, the blonde, yeah. Yes. That song kept playing every time he seen her. So you, you every time he sees her, you get the dun 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 You get that beat. So I was I was like I would always watch, I was like, where where's that beat from? And then when I looked it up and I heard the actual song, I was like, oh, this is this is a, a, a bop, as they say. It's uh, a good song. <laughs> Dude, I remember Max Keeble's big move. I enjoyed Little Romeo was in that movie because Little Romeo yeah. was just coming out with, like, My Baby and all that stuff before he, he was talking. He had a talk- little rap part in this, too. I think yes. Was, I don't think it, his show was out by then, but. No, his, no, his show didn't come out. Right. Yeah, his show didn't come out until, like, 03, 04 with Master P and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. You know, I want to talk about all that again. Now, this made me talk about all that just because uh, I didn't realize how many spinoffs they had from all that. Yeah. Like, they have uh, the Amanda show, obviously. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you want to count this, but Drake and Josh is a spinoff of the Amanda show, so I don't know if you count it as a spinoff of all that, yeah. too. I mean, in a way, kind of, because, like, the mother and Drake and Josh were all from the Amanda show, so, yeah, you okay. can kind of count it from a technicality, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Zoe One One was actually a spinoff, if you know that. Because, okay. Uh, Jamie Lynn, Jamie Lynn was on like seasons, I think eight and nine, I think, or nine and ten. Oh, with all that, where she was like the grandmother and doing like all the old woman, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I I ain't even looking at the list right now. I know I know Just Jordan. I don't know if you ever seen that show, but Just Jordan was like one of my shows I liked uh, as a kid. I do. I remember not, watching that. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of them shows. See, I didn't really like him much on all that, but when his, his actual show came, I was like, oh, this is actually a good show. It's pretty good. It well, is. Well, to me, it's pretty good. Well, pretty goofy probably back then. I look at it now, I probably not like it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, you look at some stuff and you're like, why did I watch it? Like, I remember, um, remember when Shaquille O'Neal had that show on Nickelodeon that he used to narrate? Remember that one? I think Robert Richard was on that show from Cousin Skeeter. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> Cousin Skeeter. Man, that show too. Seven oh two, man. R- remixing Stilo, talking about Skeeter. Yeah, man. That man. It's a lot of. It's a lot of old shows when I watch now. I'm like, ugh. But it's a lot of shows I watch. I'm like, oh, they and they still good to me. Like, I've been watching Smart Guy. I've been watching yeah. Sister Sister. Because all these shows come on like every day on uh, I don't know what channel they come on. I forget, but they come on like every day. Like Smart Guy, Moesha, Sister Sister. I think the Steve Harvey show. They come on every day. So. I just turn to that channel and I just leave it on for the day or whatever. I got playing in the background and I find myself enjoying the episodes. 
I agree. I mean, when you, I mean, how can you not when all of a sudden you start hitting here and when the funk hits the fan, all the people want to <laughs> come on, get with me, get with me. Oh man. I, I would prefer the Steve Harvey show over all those shows. I just named just, it's like enjoyable. Like, cause I don't really like Steve Harvey, like his stand up. be honest, which I don't, but his show is, is legit. Like funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were so, so many good stuff and good moments from that show, whether, whether it be him and the principal or, you know, him and Cedric, uh, uh, the entertainer. So, I mean, you had a lot of great him dynamics. And, him and LaVita. LaVita. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, there was a new addition on that, too. Remember at the talent show, they were all performing If It Isn't Love? And they were like, you remember that one? They did like a new edition episode where they were performing at the talent show and he was helping them. Yeah, do... I remember they did a talent show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think. My shows I like I I liked Family Matters of course. Yeah, Family Matters. Also. I like um oh I just had it in my head. oh uh Malcolm and Eddie. I like Malcolm and Eddie as well. Probably not sure if you've seen that. Uh it's oh, yeah. Mom Warner from uh from the Cosby show and Eddie Griffin. Eddie yeah. Griffin, yes. Um you know, there's a lot of shows in my head I like, but for some reason this this genre of the teen a coming of age genre is just something that I stick to for some reason. Like Boomy's World, I like. Mm-hmm. It's uh my favorite show. Also, I like Freaks and Geeks. So that is like that show should have got canceled in my opinion. But I can't say that because it's canceled now or how they would have did. But looking back at it, I'm like that show is like a masterpiece to me. Yeah, I mean, I think with me, like you're talking about all these shows, I remember watching like Figure It Out with Summer Sanders and seeing all like these people on the show. I mean, Figure, figure it Out, yeah, Figure It Out was my shit, man. I mean, you see like the Big Show, the Giant was on there, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, all these people from the dude from Wienerville, uh, all that. C- Christy Noyes was on there. I mean, Lori Beth Denberg. I mean, so many people. I mean, the girl from the Mystery Files of Shelby Wu. I mean, you saw you saw a lot of great moments of Figure It Out. I mean, I know they tried to like redo it when they came back. Yeah, I know they brought it. They brought it back, and it was. It was something first, then it was figured out. Well, I think it was brain. Oh, something. brain surge, brain surge, brain surge. Yes, yes, yes. And then yeah, and, they, just... and they changed it. Well, at least they had the same host or whatever. Yeah, they had the but... same host, and it was kind of like yeah, no. I mean, when they, it's a lot of shows. Like we never even talk about the game show aspect. I okay. wasn't one of those people that really liked the game show aspect, or at least the Nickelodeon game show aspect. For me, uh, probably because I, I don't know, maybe. I just wanted to watch other stuff at the time, and I thought it was boring. And then I started watching. I was like, "Oh, wait a minute! This is actually entertaining." Well, and then, I, um, you know what it was too? Like I remember watching like your Legends of the Hidden Tap or Nickelodeon Gas, Nickelodeon Guts, and all that good stuff. But I remember the Double Dares with Mark Summers, and then we got the Double Dare two thousand with the other guy, and I was kind of like, "Eh, it's okay, but it's like nothing can beat the original Double Dare." And now I got Double Dare again. Exactly. With, uh, I don't even know who who doing it, but I seen like the new day was on there, Keenan and Kel was on there. Yeah. So they you know, still do good stuff. You know what the thing with Kel is, like, just to go to Kel for a second, like, I gave Game Shakers a try, and I liked, I think the only reason why I watched Game Shakers was just because I like you both. Me and you both. Yeah, okay. And I think the one episode I like where he was talking about, you know, your warm, soft buns, and he's singing about, you know, look at you, Clam Burger, and he's playing the piano. That's like the thing that still cracks me up from that song where he's talking about the warm, soft buns of the burger. So like when I found out Kale was coming back, I, I gave it I gave the show a try. Give it a try. Uh, I didn't like it at first. I I don't I'm not saying I grew to it, but I was basically just looking forward to Kale each episode, basically. Me too. And then I got to a point where I was like, yeah, this this show is not worth it for me just to look for Kale and this whole thing. So I just stopped watching. And I thought they went off the air, but apparently they got new episodes. Well, yeah, and I think everybody on that show has pretty much hit puberty now, so I mean, they're still they're still going at it. Yeah, I mean, I think shows are—I don't want to say kids not good, but I think it, the shows are better when the kids are more experienced and when they're older, because you can get in more stuff when they're older. Like, true, you can't really do that much, like Boomy's World, or like what's another show they grew over time, like Family Matters or. 
Yeah, full house. I mean, you get a lot of that dynamic when they get older. I think when you look at, like, what where Corey and Topanga were as kids, and then, you know, they grow into, like, you know, middle school and high school, and, like, so many memorable moments from when they were in middle school and high school. I mean, when, when Corey is graduating and he's, like, going crazy because there's chickens in the hallway, like, it's such a great <laughs> night. Like, like, there's chickens in the hallway! <laughs> like, that, yeah, Corey is one of the... I don't... I wish I knew somebody like Corey because that is... That is hilarious. It is. And there I was mean, like, uh, there's chickens in the hallway. There was like, whoopee. <laughs> I mean, there's so many. I mean, that, and I think one of my favorites, like every time Halloween comes around, I'll watch. And then there was Sean, where they do the whole, you know, you know, is the, who's the killer? The janitor is it Feeny? Or, mm-hmm. Oh my God, they killed Kennedy. You know, Kenny. I mean, there's so many funny moments from that show. It was like, uh, what did they say? Only virgin side, and it was like, <laughs> it was like, I'm dead. I'm dead. Well, oh, I can that, get as sick as I can get without actually dying. And <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because Jack and uh, and Sean and and, and uh, Eric are all on dead, and then Corey just goes to the it. Thanks for saving me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got so many jokes. I don't. I know. Uh, I don't know how they got away with some of those jokes. Honestly. Well, I think but... the, well, I remember as a kid, like the one episode that they never played on the Disney Channel, like going forward, was the one the one where he got drunk because you know he was you know heartbroken about losing to Panga. Okay, I know. I know they banned one episode, like period. Um, the prom episode. Oh yeah, when they're yeah, the promises, promises episode. Yep. Yeah, because I don't. I honestly don't see nothing wrong. I mean, I understand they was about to, but they didn't do anything, so I don't understand why they banned that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, then then they're walking into each other's rooms, and the father walks in with the panga, and then he walks in with his mom, like. <laughs> It's funny, but it's just like they never did anything. I guess they didn't want to imply that they were having sex on prom. I don't know, but yeah, there wasn't really anything that bad about it. Like for me, when I watch t- when I watch shows, one of my favorite tropes because they there are different tropes. One of my favorite tropes is like the misunderstood the misunderstanding episode. Like like um one episode of Boy Meets World, he tells his mom, "Hey, I went too far with Topanga." She's like, "What do you mean?" It was oh. like, and we ran the back of Chubby's, and she looked so pretty, and I went for it. <laughs> oh, and then she's like, oh, my God, and then the cup, the yeah. cup, man, the cup, the mug. And then he was like, yeah, I just went for it. I think I went too far with her. And then uh, she was like, oh, sit, I need to sit down. And then she's like, and then he's like, no, that's not what happened, because the cup breaks, and she's getting all like, oh, my God, what, what are yeah, you just yeah, doing? yeah. And that's the episode oh. where he, where they first tell I love you, and then the jean jacket. Oh, yeah, good, good yeah. time. Yeah, so like I like those misunderstandings because it's like I thought you were talking about this, but you're talking about this, and this it just it just makes me funny because the audience knows what they're talking about, but so, the person don't know. This that's what makes it funny to me, I guess. I always like the Family Matters episode where Laura and Steve, like you know, they saw each other naked in the shower and they're trying to keep it on the. Oh hush. yeah, and Eddie, Eddie's. <laughs> and it's like, you saw each other. Like, saw each other naked. <laughs> and he's yes. like, hey. If I could, I walked in on mom and dad once when I was eight. If I could get over that, you two can get over this. Oh man, man! Oh, that is that. That episode was funny. It was. You know what it is too? I'm, like, like I look at themes. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just want to say I, I, I love like a lot of themes. Like the Boy Meets World had different themes. I mean, Jamie Fox show, and you know, here comes Jamie Fox, and then he did that. Then he did that. It's all I need. Simple things are all I need. Like Sister Sister changed it up. Like it was originally Sister Sister. I never knew how much I missed you, and then you know that whole you know Sister Sister Sister. I got my own my yeah. And I mean, smart guy even switched it up, you know, towards the end there. You know, I didn't where, like, the, I didn't like they switched though. I like the he's a smart guy. So you didn't like when Omar Gooding was rapping on the uh, on the towards the end of Smart Guy? No, I not that I didn't like it, but I like. I guess I got so used to the other song to where I was like, yeah, they, they shouldn't change it. Every day's another lesson in my head's in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean. I I think Omar Gooding character was my favorite character on that show. Honestly, I think Mo was my favorite character on the show. Uh, well, he was he was he made the show. He was funny. Morris L. Tibbs, you know what I'm saying? You know what what he's trying to tell uh, TJ? He's like, you mean it was a gazebo? That's placebo. <laughs> I like when they did the money dance, and then <laughs> yes. the money dance was like my favorite. Like, I if I had like a, a like a best friend or somebody like that close, I do a money dance with them like everywhere for no reason. <laughs> Well, they, I think him and Jason Weaver had such a great chemistry. Like, I always love when they were trying to teach TJ how to be a bad boy for Kyla Pratt, and they're doing the moves and get their jiggy on, and they're and they're pipping him up and all these, and show him how to walk and stuff. It's one of my favorites. 
I like the episode they had a. Uh, well, okay. I I like the episode where they had Disney's Child on there too, because uh, oh, they were all yes. they were all doing all that extra. And TJ was just standing. There. It was like, oh, what we pick him? Simple <laughs> as that. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that was the height of Destiny's Child right there, man. No, no, no with Wyclef, and then you say, yeah, 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 and then as we got towards the bugaboo with Kobe Bryant in the music video. Now, I want to say he was in the actual the actual video. I want to say okay. they, like, shot, he was in part of the actual video. Okay. Or they did, like, an alternate video. I believe they did, like, an alternate video or something. He was actually in it. Uh, Taj Murray. Yes. But I was like, hey, did you know, I, smart. See, the thing that the '90s shows have is like rewatchability that yeah. I like. Like you know, a lot of shows today don't have rewatchability unless they're like I don't want to say adult-ish shows, but you know, more of the more of the like say Big Bang theories or you know stuff like that is more rewatchable than stuff they have out today. Oh, yeah, I mean, I look at where I was rewatchable. My mom always used to tell me to go to bed because, you know, I'm I'm 27 years old now. But, you know, as a grown-ass man, and you want to stay up at 2 or 3 in the morning to watch the good old Disney movies like Genius and Phantom of the Megaplex and Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire and all these nostalgia movies that you loved as a kid. Like, I mean, they actually play, like, the good stuff at, like, 2 or 3 in the morning going on the weekends, you know, with yeah. what we had. They always so. did that. Yeah, me too, man. I mean, I just appreciated them, like you, I appreciate the nostalgia because nostalgia is what hits you, you know, and evokes a lot of emotion. So you got to love it. Yeah, I mean, literally, it's like, say, for example, if I do like a, a episode on like, um, what's a movie? Uh, uh, Smart House. If I yeah. do like a, 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 a whole podcast episode on Smart House. I'm going to get like two of the, the couple of people going to say, Oh, I remember this movie and they bring back memories. And then, like, say if that bring like 50 people, and then I do like another review on like, I, I don't know, the 13th year or something, then I'm going to get like a different set of like maybe 30 or 40 people like, Hey, I remember this show too. And then they're going to see the other one. They're like, Oh, I remember these two movies. You know, it just it sparks up their interest. That's why I like doing this. Of course. And I mean the 13th year when, you know, he's not a mermaid, he's a merman. And then you, <laughs> then you got Smart House, you know, when, you know, the house is jumping. I mean, they're doing, they're watching. That, that song is like, I like that song on the Me whole album. Even when they had the little performance of the, I don't oh, even know what it was. Okay, so I know what you're talking about. So Five was singing Slam Dunk to Funk from one of those Disney and concerts and they're doing the choreography in the living room. It is. Man, oh, that, that is... Because <laughs> it looks like it looks so green screen, but it looks like they're actually like doing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why I also. Well, yeah, that's why I always appreciated. Like I mentioned, like we were talking about Britney Spears before. Like one of my favorite episodes of the famous Jet Jackson, where they were in the haunted house and Britney Spears is performing sometimes in the ha what supposedly haunted house so that it was where they were doing the dance. Yeah. Speaking of Britney Spears, she was in something else I was watching. Oh, Austin Powers. Oh my. Oh. Yes. Uh, she had the um I wanna say she had like the guns in her bra or something like that and they were shooting out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so 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 ridiculous like that I could say. Oh man. This... <laughs> Austin Powers is like ridiculous. Like he's ridiculous in many ways. Yeah. I mean I was I, such, I was a fan of all three, so I mean I think each and every one of them were unique in their own ways and crazy. I liked all three. For, like, see, when I was growing up, my my sister more had control of the television than I did. So, like, you know, from this time to this time, we had to watch what she wanted to watch, and she she put on Gold Fink, Gold Member a lot. Was it Gold Fink, Finger Gold Member? Gold Member. Gold, gold Member. She put on Gold Member a lot to where I was like, I almost had all the movies memorized. Uh, I am Foxy Cleopatra, you know. And I'm a whole lot of women. Yes. Then for some odd reason, they had Dan Aykroyd in there. Oh yeah, in the beginning when he. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're I, talking. About. Yes. So like that that part is interesting to me. And then another part I like, or another trope I like from Austin Powers is uh when they when they send the missiles out and they look like objects like gen genitals. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, that looks like a big pair of melons. Melons, everybody. Melons. Or boobs. Boobs, Aussie. Yeah. Boobs. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then they'll look up and they'll be like, that's a big pair of, uh, what, what, what? Man, I can't even think of right now. It could have been like, you know, um, water. No, uh, no it, it was, uh, it was, um, fo- they was at a football game. It was the Titans, but the, the A and the N was missing. So it just said, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Ugh. that, that, yeah, that was, that's funny. It is. Austin, I heard they were going to come out with another one, but if they don't, they don't. If they do, I'll I'll probably still watch it because it's it's, it's just so silly and ridiculous. Now, uh, see, (laughs) (laughs) now, movies that I, how, how would I put this? So, one of my favorite actors is Eddie Murphy cuz I I like majority of his movies but I'll be honest he had some some bad movies The Adventures uh, of Pluto Nash y- Yeah <laughs> Now I will, I will say some of his movies that they consider bad I liked like Showtime him and Robert De Niro Yep I like I like Showtime I thought well I I thought it was a solid movie I thought it was all right Uh Daddy Daycare Yeah Daddy Daycare was it was it was all right I I can understand the premise of it but um the Nutty Professor, see, that's one of the movies I like, but I don't like at the same time. Because, like, I don't like all the fart jokes and stuff like that, but some of the actual stuff in there is funny. Like, when him and, um... Dave Chappelle? Him and, him and Dave Chappelle or Reggie in the movie, when they go at it, that's the funniest scene in the whole movie to me. And I, like, I rewatch... I was I want to say every week that sounds too excessive, but like every couple months I go back and rewatch it. Hey man, I mean I was a fan of those. Were you a fan of Nutty Professor to the Clumps, where he's talking about put my beef in your taco and he's singing and the, and the I, neighbors getting all grossed out? I I saw that like a couple times. I didn't like it all because it was like more fart jokes and more like the ham like the hamster got big and the hamster like great this dude. Larry Miller, yeah, <laughs> yes. I was like, yeah. I, I mean, it was okay, but. I understand it as a sequel. I was like, yeah, I like the first one better. That's all right. A lot of people, the first ones are mostly the better ones, but yeah, I was kind of like that with uh, Big Mama's House. Like when Big Mama's House came out, I loved it. Then we got to Big Mama's House too. Then like Father Like Son with the dude who was in Lottery Ticket with Bow Wow. Yeah, well, uh, Brandon uh, Jackson. Jackson, yeah. Something like that. Brandon T. Jackson, yeah. Brandon T. Jackson, yeah. I mean. I, I I do Big Mama's House. I mean, all something, something about me. I like the second one better. Yeah, I mean, the first two, but when we got to the third one, I was kind of like, yeah. But for me, I think just because of that nostalgia of you know, little Bow Wow's bounce when he was in there, Jermaine Dupri, Nas, and Monica, I got to have it taking that sample of Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel's. I mean, yeah, I, I like I like I you know I like the second one for Big Mama's House. A lot of what else? What else has a sequel that that we can talk about? Like, oh, have you seen Beverly Hill Cop? Yes, I have. Okay, so in that series, I like the second one better. I don't know what it is about me when they have a sequel and it's more based on the summertime. I like I end up liking a sequel for some odd reason. You know what it was for it, me? I just I enjoyed that whole series. Like, I think one and two were my go to for that. It's kind of like Home Alone because like when we got to three with Alex Dillon's, I was like, nah. Like one and two were my go to. I mean, if we are talking about Home Alone, I would accept three. Like, okay, I, I would accept it. It's it, I I don't think it goes. I accept three. It's a solid movie. Even if when they call it Home Alone, it's an understandable, solid, soft reboot movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, four, five, and I think six just don't appeal to me. Uh, Raven, like I was at that. So I remember that. So Raven, when it came out, did you like Raven's Home when they did that on the Disney Channel? Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> I got an explanation for this. All right. The the show of Raven, that's so Raven, yes. had a certain essence, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that they did pull off that essence in Raven's Home well. Like, I think if you watch Raven's, if you watch That's So Raven, and you watch Raven's Home, it has the same essence. Like, it has the same mentality. And it don't just focus on the kids. Like, like Raven and Chelsea are not just, like, throwback, throwaway background characters like they're actually involved yeah they focus like, on girl Meets world they did not have the essence of boy Meets world like Corey was barely there when he was there he wasn't Corey. he was 
Mr. Matthews. And not even that. He's, he's like a whole, he's like a watered down version of Mr. Feeney. It's the way they wanted him to be instead of just being Corey with aspects of Feeney. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah, I know. I don't think they had that same essence as far as like the show. But I think Raven's Home, they put off, like, it might have not have been the same as far as like feeling, but they, they still got the same essence. And I think when you got the same essence, it's better. People will like were accepted more if you got the same energy. Like for like all that, if they have the same energy as those first couple seasons, then I think it'd be successful. Even if it's bad, if they had that same energy, then I think it'd be all right. Because uh, you know, Kim Possible. Did you see the Kim Possible movie? Oh, uh, why? See, see, yeah. but that's what, like for me. As look, the movie wasn't good. I I say the movie was not good. Okay, but as far as the material that they were given, I think they did a good job of using. I think they did a good job bringing the show to a movie standpoint, even if the movie wasn't good. Like, I think that's, well, I think that's a fair assessment. But like, they did the best of what they had, but yeah, it's not like you know, like the show is. But they did, they did, they did it well. Yeah, like, like the like uh, the stuff that they had to use, like the they used throwback stuff. Like they they used their material good. It just. They they didn't they didn't make a good movie if that makes sense. I understand completely, man. I've I've had that same mindset about it with a lot of these movies that come out now. Yeah, I mean, if, if they the movie did look cheap as well. Like it, oh. it it uh, I was disappointed in those trailers. But then when I seen the movie, I was like, the movie was was bad. But I couldn't I could understand I could understand the you know why they why they did what they did. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what, what I'm trying to, now I'm trying to think of other comments because uh <laughs> oh man what else I'm trying to think of what else is a uh... oh Corey's home did you like Corey's home ah uh, was that oh was that Corey 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 in the house that one yes I mean okay. not Corey's home Corey in the house my bad you know what? I had no problem with it I actually thought it was it was kind of funny I think I thought it was funny one of like his villains on that was played by Jake Thomas who was Matt McGuire. <laughs> On Lizzie McGuire, so I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, it was fine. I thought they did they did well with what they had. I mean, like when I was growing up, I, I liked it, but then I see a lot of people. I was like, they say they don't like it. I was like, well, I can understand that. Like, I think if you go on YouTube and you go to like the best scene, cinematic scene in TV show history, I think it's like a scene from Courtney House. It's like a silly scene. So, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I always like Corey's character, so. I guess that's why I like the show like I did. Yeah, I think with Kyle Massey, like his brother was on Zoe 101 and I liked him as like that character. Yeah. And then, you know, when he was doing like Life is Rough with Mitchell Musso, who was who later going to be in Hannah Montana. I mean, he's funny. I like Kyle. I always thought he had that great comedic timing. Yeah, yeah. I always like I wish he would come back to Raven's home, at least for a little bit. Like, I know the dad came back. He was the only person to come back. The dad and Devon. Yep. And Chelsea were the only people to come back. Like, I know they're probably not going to have, like, Orlando Brown, Brown come back. Yeah. But I think Kyle Massey should come back. You know, Bring like, because honestly, I think the kid does look a lot like Kyle Massey. Uh, 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 Booker. Yeah, Booker. Yeah, he man. looks a lot like Kyle Massey. He acts like him a little bit. So I'm like, I, w- I want to see them two have, like, a nephew and, and uh, you know, they. Nephew, yeah, like uncle. nephew, uncle kind of dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like so talking to you, I brought back it's like so many memories running through my head. I'm gonna save some of this for your show. Okay, right, like cool, man. your show. If I go all over, I apologize. Yeah, don't even worry about it. We're both two very passionate people about what we do, so I'm, uh, it's no problem. Yeah, so I have this segment come. You know, you listen to my episode with Christy. That was yeah. like the first time I, I uh I involved this segment. Even okay. though it's my outro song, I'm gonna start doing a segment called "The End of the Road." Uh, just because it's my outro song, I might as well do something to incorporate uh, my outro song. So I just started having a segment called "The End of the Road." I might have some some cool little music or something playing <laughs> before I do this. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe not. I, you know, I'm still early on, so a lot of stuff I'm doing is still. Uh, in the works. I haven't got my show perfect yet, so 
you know, a lot of people got to bear with me. But we are coming up to the end. Is there anything you want to say to the audience, like a special word or anything? Special word? Um, for those who want to get into podcasting or whatever endeavor that you want to do, I just say go for it. Stay on your path. Stay on the grind. And in the end, it will all work itself out and everything will come into fruition. Just pretty much all I can say is just uh, stay hopeful, stay on your grind, and just stay humble. Stay respectful and just do you and just know that you are worth it. Yeah, man. So um, is there anything you want to plug? You, you can plug away at anything, how they can get in t- contact with you, how they can follow you. Follow your uh, your podcast, everything. Just give it all to them. Okay, so if you guys want to check me out, we'll start with my shows first. You can check out SoundCloud.com slash MCLarkin92, and it's the SNM Show Podcast Network. For So for those who want to get their minds out of the gutter, uh, SNM stands for Stephen Mike. It's the Stephen Mike Show Network. We have a lot of shows on there. Uh, my buddy Steve has a hockey show called the Stevie Nicks Hockey Experience. I do my interview shows called On the Mic with Mike. Um I have a pop culture show called the Pop Culture History Podcast. Uh, there's so much shows on there. Our main show, Stephen Mike Show. And for those who want to follow pop culture, my Twitter is at pop underscore culture underscore pod for the pop culture show. My Twitter is at SM Show One for my shows. And if you want to follow me on my personal account, it's MCL92, my name and the year I was born, 1992. Uh, and our official website is www.stephenmikeshow.com. Uh, the other thing that I have a project on I'm doing now is the LFC podcast, which is called Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, and LFC stands for Lingerie Fighting Championship. It's a mixture of MMA, uh, pro wrestling, kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu, but they are in their lingerie looking beauty, you know, beautiful, sexy, and vivacious, and just, you know, kicking ass and taking names at the same time are looking very, very beautiful. And uh, you can check that out on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash LFC, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the LFC podcast on Anchor. On Stitcher, same thing, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, LFC podcast, and TuneIn Radio, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the LFC podcast. So I'm working on a lot of stuff, and I, I love what I'm doing. I love to meet and interact with great people like yourself, and I'm happy we got the chance to do this show. I look forward to having you on my pop culture show. So I'm having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. And uh, for those who want to follow me, please do. I'm very uh, personable, and I'm very you know, interactive with people. So, again, thank you all. Just check out my stuff and show some support for the prime nostalgia and support myself, man. Just I'm, I'm easy going, man. Okay, okay, okay. I know that was a lot, but I'm very uh, but I'm very passionate. Oh, no, it's, it's all cool. I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video. I'll put it in the description of the uh when I put it up on the Google podcast and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully a lot of people uh like this episode, they generate towards you. Right. Well, that'd I be good. It. Thank you. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I mean, because you and I were talking about a lot because you and I can go in a different variety because we like a lot of things. So I really did enjoy doing this with you. Yeah. Like when I started talking about like nostalgia and stuff that I like growing up, my mind goes everywhere. Like usually if I have a guest on, I try to keep it to like one or two paces. But with you, since you're like, you know, pop culture history and all that, I just go here, here, here. here. My mind just goes everywhere. (laughs) It's all good, man. I appreciate it. And one last thing. I asked yeah. everybody this question. You heard it on the Christie podcast. Mm-hmm. My saying that I said at the end of my shows is prime time is all the time. And I need a suggestion for you of what I should add at the end. Well, you have time right there, right? Like prime time is all the time. You could do like the tick tock of a clock, like it's time, like a kind of deal. Okay, you, okay, okay. There's okay. a suggestion. Prime time is all the time. And then you could do like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Or if you wanted to do um, prime time is all the time, you could do like if you want to look for wrestling uh, reference, God rest his soul, Big Van Vader. You could do the it's time. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's good. You could incorporate the time stuff, man. Or you could just have you know prime time. You know, freaking you know Deion Sanders. Just prime time. I know what the at the end of my last episode, I did like a Ferris Bueller type of thing. I heard that. I like that. But yeah, I guess I would do like maybe Vader, maybe TikTok, TikTok, like a clock, just or anything. Deion Sanders related. I think it would, it would be cool. Or if you want, I'll give you another one that I also like. This will take it back to TNA for you. Primetime Elix Skipper. Just say my name. Prime time, baby. Okay, okay. Is there anything you want to say to, to end this outro? This is a long outro. I understand, people. But uh, that's what happens when your mind is flowing. Exactly. That's when you get the the juices flowing and we just let it flow. Like like in Vogue. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. I'm singing it on the Wayans Brothers. Oh, we'll be here all day, man. We'll save it for my show. But I think just to end <laughs> just to end it, um, I think the last word I could say is just guys, continue to listen to the uh Rhyme Time Nostalgia podcast, check out my work and just support and just 
you know, support everybody and enjoy what you're doing and whatever you are doing. Just be happy because if you're not happy and doing what you're doing, then why are you doing it? So just thank you all for listening. Yep. And on that note, don't know what I'm going to add yet. Maybe it will be what I said I was going to add, which I'll figure out when I go back and listen to it because I forgot already. Oh, the house is jumping. Yeah. Yes. All right. So maybe you'll hear the house is jumping or uh, don't know if I'm going to do a smart house episode. So maybe I won't do the house is jumping. You'll hear something. All right. Just know you will hear something after this. Prime time is all the time. And we're out.